Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless the chains are already tightening around all of us i mean if you think about it ultimately the radical left is coming after all of us because they know that our allegiance is not to them our allegiance is to our country and our allegiance is to our creator they don't want to hear that they don't want to hear that how any Christian can vote for a Democrat, Christian or person of faith, person of faith, how you can vote for a Democrat is crazy. It's crazy. The evil we are seeing today isn't Republican versus Democrat, right versus left. It's good versus evil. There are only two groups of people in this world, the saved and the unsaved. Here's a question everyone needs to answer. Whether you are a Democrat, Republican, or not affiliated with either party, do you love Jesus? Many professing Christians say they love Jesus, but in all actuality, they hate him. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. Many who profess to be Christ followers are pro-abortion, pro-homosexual, and pro-transgender. They are defiant to the laws of God, as we read in 1 John. 3 4. Whoever commits sin also commits lawlessness, and sin is lawlessness. How then can these people claim they love Jesus when he said, If you love me, keep my commandments? Jesus declares, They honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, as we read in Matthew 15 8 and 9. These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. For those who say Jesus never said anything about abortion, homosexuality, and transgenderism being a sin, the Bible tells us all scripture is inspired by God as we read in 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. Scripture has plenty of negative things to say about killing the innocent and homosexuality. It's called lawlessness. Many professing Christians justify sin by using Christ's commandment to love your neighbor as yourself. Loving your neighbor as yourself means telling them the truth in love, not by condoning their sin. The good news is, God will forgive all sin, as we read in 1 John 1, 9. If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Jesus said, as a sign of His coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. A rare tornado in Indonesia has damaged hundreds of homes and injured 33 people. Eyewitness video shot on February 21st shows the dark funnel cloud formed over the West Java province. Rooftop tiles and debris swirled through the air, caught in the powerful wind. Reports say a nearby factory was destroyed, threatening the livelihood of many locals. 
tornadoes are not a typical occurrence in Indonesia. This weather phenomenon is more likely to be seen in the Northern Hemisphere. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the United States sees the most tornadic activity in the world. Over 1,150 tornadoes form in the U.S. each year. That's more than Australia, Canada, and every European country combined. More than 2,000 people followed emergency evacuation orders to flee wildfires in Australia. Fires are spreading faster than expected through the state of Victoria. Hot weather and strong winds have created prime conditions for large bushfires to spread. Officials say homes and livestock have been lost, but they aren't sure just how many. We are sadly hearing reports of property loss that are starting to come through. Given the active nature of the fire and the difficult terrain in the area, it is going to take some time to assess the full extent of the damage. About 1,000 firefighters have been fighting the blaze. They're using 50 helicopters and aircraft to try to control the burn area. Victoria is the state in the southeastern corner of Australia. The largest part of the fires is burning about 59 miles from the state's capital city, Melbourne. Severe sandstorms coupled with heavy snowfall have blanketed China's northwestern regions. A wave of sandstorms swept across northern China over the weekend, disrupting transport leaving thousands stranded, reducing visibility to less than 100 meters, prompting authorities to implement traffic control measures. In Turpan, a city in Xinjiang, local rescue teams were deployed. At least 12,000 stranded vehicles and 32,000 passengers were relocated. Over in Bolivia, heavy rain triggered landslides and put rivers at risk of overflowing. At least three people have been killed in the landslide. Tens of houses, thousands of houses have been destroyed while several others have been evacuated. Locals were seen sifting through the debris of collapsed homes, searching for any remaining belongings. Residents have been assessing the damage and trying to retrieve their belongings after relentless rain swept away several homes. According to local media, the disaster has killed a woman and two minors and about 60 families are now homeless. European scientists last month declared that the world had experienced its hottest January on record. And now February is on course to become the hottest on record as well. This comes as scientists warn that the planet is heating up at an accelerating pace. Data from the Climate Change Institute at the America's University of Maine shows that first eight days of the month have already broken records. The data shows that if the rising temperatures continue, it will be the warmest February in history. This comes as countries all around the world have seen unusually high temperatures for this time of the year. Australia, where it is also the summer months, soaring temperatures have resulted in a bushfire. Chile has seen forest fires like Australia and over 100 people were reported dead. The Guardian it reported that in the past week, monitoring stations in South Africa, Saudi Arabia, Thailand and Indonesia, Kazakhstan, Colombia, Japan, North Korea and the Maldives registered monthly heat records. It's not just the air that's heating up, the sea temperatures have also been breaking records. Scientists are now saying that it isn't only global warming that they're worried about, but also the unpredictability of a natural weather system. And such risks will increase every year unless human carbon emissions are slashed and forest clearance reversed. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather, as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. Pestilence is the Greek word noimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16 21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blaspheme God because of the plague of the hail. 
since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8, and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire, and men were scorched with great heat. And they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. The outbreak of locusts could worsen as global temperatures continue to climb. Far-reaching, synchronized desert locust outbreaks are strongly coupled with climate change in the last several decades. A study that was published in the journal Science Advances found the study is the first to show a robust link between large-scale synchronous locust swarms and specific weather patterns. Severe weather events like patterns of wind and extreme rain are intensifying and becoming more frequent with climate change. According to researchers who analyzed 35 years of locust sightings and climate data, they conclude that climate change may be contributing to more widespread locust swarms. Researchers calculate that about 80 million locusts are capable of devouring enough cropland to supply food for 35,000 people, which could contribute to food insecurity and famine in the long term. According to the paper, new locust hotspots that could emerge due to warming temperatures includes Iran, Afghanistan, Turkmenistan and western parts of India. The researchers advise that international cooperation will be crucial to aid the endemic locust control and prevent global locust plagues. Joel 115 Alas for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as destruction from the Almighty. There is no doubt that the prophet Joel was warning his readers about a future day when God would judge all people. The day of the Lord the prophet Joel is referring to is the seven-year tribulation. These terrible judgments are pictured as seven seals opened, seven trumpets blown, and seven bowls poured out. The first four of the seven seals are known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal and the white horse rides, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal and the red horse rides, war will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the third seal and the black horse rides, famine will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the fourth seal and the pale horse rides, death and Hades will be unleashed. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was death, and Hades followed with him, and power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with the sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion, meaning 2 billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to 4 billion. Doctors are warning of an alarming increase in measles cases across the country. One South Florida school is struggling to contain a measles outbreak. But the state's top doctor is defying more than 50 years of federal guidance. The end of the school day at Manatee Bay Elementary in Weston, near Fort Lauderdale, comes with the hope of no new measles cases. It's very disruptive. It's not really fair. The Broward County School District says 33 out of nearly 1,100 students are not vaccinated for measles. So far, there are six confirmed cases of the highly contagious infection, which starts with cold-like symptoms 7 to 14 days after exposure, then a rash. For some, the disease can be deadly. I have not seen any outbreak of measles in my 30 years as being an educator. Peter Licata is the Broward County Schools superintendent. There's been some questions about allowing unvaccinated students into the school during this time because it is so highly contagious. That would be the uh, determination of the health department and the state. But Florida Surgeon General Dr. Joseph Latipo is leaving attendance decisions to parents, breaking with established medical guidelines, not recommending the vaccine nor requiring unvaccinated people to stay home. Dr. Randy Katz manages the emergency room at Joe DiMaggio Children's Hospital where the cases were treated. Would you recommend unvaccinated children stay home? I think if you follow the CDC guidelines, they do recommend um, an unvaccinated child who's been exposed to somebody with measles should stay home 
um, for at least 21 days. The CDC reports there have been 35 recent cases of measles across 15 states. Michigan reported an additional case bringing the number to 16. The disease was declared eliminated from the U.S. in 2000, but vaccination rates have since fallen below the 95% needed to achieve herd immunity. A man in Alaska died from something known as Alaska pox. Officials from the state said the disease, which causes skin lesions and swollen lymph nodes, has been around since 2015. But last month's death is the first reported fatality. They say the man was undergoing cancer treatments at the time. Cases are rare. In fact, officials say there have been less than 10 cases of Alaska pox reported since it was first discovered. While the infections have only been found in Alaska, medical professionals say there is always a risk of it spreading beyond the state. The characteristic is a rash, which is a pox-like rash that occurs. And uh, also, if you're feeling poorly, have fever, are fatigued, please seek medical attention. And of course, even if you haven't been to Alaska and you have symptoms like that, you have to ask, could it be mpox? Mpox, as in monkeypox, another orthopox virus. Officials say they haven't observed any human-to-human -human transmission of Alaska pox. They say it has been found primarily in small mammals with rare transmission to people. It's a disease everyone is hoping stays rare and local. The World Health Organization has issued a stark new warning about global readiness for the so-called disease X, a term for the next hypothetical deadly pandemic that's going to hit us someday. The next pandemic is a matter of when, not if. And as things stand, the world remains unprepared for the next disease X and the next pandemic. We weren't ready for COVID. Why should we be ready for this thing? Well, we're not. But the other issue is that the World Health Organization loves to scare people. And they've been saying it's not a matter of when, not if. For decades now, in 2018, they coined the term disease X, meaning the disease that's coming next, that right. could get us all next. And by the way, it could spread more than COVID. It could be more deadly than COVID. That's a given, especially with all the labs around the world that are doing gain-of-function research, which are testing virus potential, and, and, they can, and the viruses could slip out of the lab. Here in the Zamzam refugee camp in North Darfur, one child is dying every two hours from malnutrition, according to Doctors Without Borders. Ten months on since the war broke out between the country's army general and the paramilitary rapid support forces, Sudan is grappling with record levels of food insecurity in what's now the world's largest displacement crisis. I have a very sick child and the hospital is so far. It's two and a half hours away and all the other hospitals are still closed because of the conflict. So my child is still sick. We've had nothing to eat since we arrived here. We used to have food cards, but not anymore. Now we don't have any food, we just exist. Inside Sudan, around 25 million people, over half the population, are in dire need of humanitarian aid. It's estimated that of those, some 18 million face crisis levels of hunger. Doctors Without Borders has urged for the international community to mobilize, saying that the humanitarian crisis could soon spiral into famine. Among children, one quarter are acutely malnourished, and 7% are in a state of severe acute malnutrition. It means that these children, if left untreated, will die within weeks. Last month, the mortality rate measured in the Zamzam camp was 2.5 per 10,000 per day. That's almost 10 times the normal mortality rate you'd expect in a camp like this. According to UN figures, the conflict in Sudan has killed thousands and internally displaced over 6 million within the country, whilst millions more have fled to neighboring Chad and Egypt. Struggling to make ends meet, hundreds of Nigerians took to the streets of Ibadan to denounce the country's rising cost of living, which many blamed on the government's failed economic policies. Do you want to kill us? Are you the first person to govern? We can't go to school, we can't pay our transport fares, we are hungry, we are angry. Over the past year, the Nigerian Naira lost 230% of its value, while national inflation reached a record 30% last month. 
This means the prices of basic goods such as rice and fuel have more than tripled, while products like meat and eggs are now considered a luxury. Many Nigerians have directed their anger at the government and are blaming President Bola Tinubu for failing to deliver on his campaign pledges. We are fast approaching a time known as the Tribulation that Jesus says will be the worst time in human history, as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. We are currently witnessing events that will continue to become more frequent and more intense until God pours out his final judgments on an unbelieving and unrepentant world. One of the judgments described in the book of Revelation includes the price of food being so high and scarce that it will cost a full day's wages just to barely get enough to eat, as we read in Revelation 6, 5, and 6. When he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a black horse, and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. In this prophecy, it will cost a day's wages just for a loaf of bread. We are not in the tribulation period yet, but we are getting extremely close. It's been two years since Vladimir Putin launched his war in Ukraine. And Ukraine's army is facing shortages of equipment and supplies and is now suffering setbacks on the battlefield. The mood here is just about as gloomy as it's been since the war began. They're desperate for ammunition. Many feel like they've been forgotten and Ukraine has just suffered one of its toughest losses of the war. The fall of Avdivka followed months of relentless bombardment and enormous losses on both sides. Ukrainian troops were overwhelmed and outgunned, and a commander said outnumbered seven to one. President Vladimir Putin, seen at a photo op aboard a nuclear-capable bomber, had mocked what he called Ukraine's chaotic retreat. The Ukrainian military blamed the defeat on perilously low ammunition. Despite an estimated investment of $75 billion in U.S. support alone, it's become a grinding war of attrition. The Ukrainian government stopped sharing the number of its military dead long ago. But the ever-growing number of fresh graves across the front lines tells a story in itself. It's midnight on March 4th, 2022. CCTV cameras capture Russian troops as they attack Europe's biggest nuclear power plant near the Ukrainian city of Zaporizhia. Pietro Kotin, the CEO of Ukraine's nuclear power company, watched the attack from Kyiv. This is just a terrifying video, watching fire spread and an attack at an active nuclear facility. Right, and the units are with nuclear materials right here. The Ukrainians broadcast warnings, telling Russian troops to stop shelling at the risk of a nuclear disaster. The warnings went unheeded. Russian troops occupied the plant and the territory around it. Ukrainian forces held on to the far bank of the Dnieper River, leaving the nuclear power station right on the front line. Two years on, the International Atomic Energy Agency, which has inspectors at the plant, is sounding the alarm. You're responsible for nuclear security all around the world. Yes. Is this the most dangerous nuclear facility on the planet right now? It's the most dangerous situation that we have. It's my job not to, uh, you know, so panic, but at the same time, I have to tell the truth of what is happening. Nuclear experts point to three main dangers. First, a military strike on the plant, either accidental or deliberate. Second, a power cut. The plant's six uranium reactors require electricity for cooling, but Ukrainian officials say three of the four power lines are damaged, and the fourth is faulty. There have already been eight blackouts as recently as December. When you have a blackout, the cooling function of the reactors is lost, and you could have a, a meltdown. And finally, it's understaffed. Ukrainians say the Russians have been abusing employees. 11,000 people worked at the plant before. Only 4,000 work there now. Irina Kokot is responsible for radiation detection for the Ukrainian government. Her office predicts how, if there was a meltdown, 
a cloud of radioactive particles would spread across much of Ukraine and neighboring countries. This is Istanbul, right here, the city of Istanbul. Contaminated the entire city of Istanbul on the Black Sea. It's a catastrophe, a total catastrophe. She says the fallout would last up to 100 years. A nuclear disaster here would be felt around the world and leave large parts of Ukraine and beyond uninhabitable. Nearly 2,000 years ago, the Apostle John was banished to the island of Patmos as punishment for sharing his faith in Jesus Christ. The Lord gave John a series of visions which described things that would take place in the last days. The visions John saw were recorded and are now known as the book of Revelation. Throughout the scriptures, terrible times are forecast for the end of this present age. The prophet Isaiah describes the earth as empty and wasted. Isaiah 24, 1. Behold, the Lord makes the earth empty and makes it waste, distorts its surface and scatters abroad its inhabitants. In the book of Revelation, we read of an hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. Revelation 3.10 Because you have kept my command to persevere, I also will keep you from the hour of trial, which shall come upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. The Lord Jesus warns us of great tribulation, which shall threaten the survival of all life on earth. Matthew 24, 21 and 22 For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. And unless those days were shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days will be shortened. The Apostle Paul speaks of sudden destruction that shall come just when men are saying, Peace and safety. 1 Thessalonians 5.3 For when they say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman, and they shall not escape. As these verses indicate, along with current events, make it plain that world conditions will be characterized by chaos, destruction, and death just before our Lord returns to take control of planet Earth. In the book of Revelation, we read about the poisoning of the oceans, the burning up of the grass and the trees, and the sun scorching people with great heat. The book of Revelation also tells us that horrible plagues will afflict mankind. There will be widespread wars and famines, and that the atmosphere will become so polluted as to reduce visibility by one-third. In the midst of all this devastation, the Earth's population will flee to the caves as people cry to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of Him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What could possibly bring about such universal carnage on the earth? Is the Bible describing a nuclear holocaust? Nuclear weapons appear to be specified in Zechariah 14.12. And this shall be the plague with which the Lord will strike all the people who fought against Jerusalem. Their flesh shall dissolve while they stand on their feet. Their eyes shall dissolve in their sockets. And their tongues shall dissolve in their mouths. The book of Joel gives us detailed imagery that describes something so huge that it seems to encompass the earth and the sky. It is made up of fire and pillars of smoke and is so vast that it darkens the sun and reddens the moon. Joel 2, 30 and 31 And I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. Luke 21, 26 through 28. Men's hearts failing them from fear and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. 
For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord, that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord, and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive, in faith, the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him, and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church. You may be at work. You may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready! Time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.